what's happening between India and Afghanistan. Apparently, the government of India is engaging with the Afghan Taliban regime in order to strengthen security and economic ties between the two nations. And the question is, should India engage with the Taliban or is it the wrong thing to do? And some people are questioning India's alleged apparent engagement with, with the Taliban. So should India engage with the Taliban or should India stay away from what some people describe as a terrorist organization? Please subscribe and let's find out what's happening and what India should do. This video is brought to you by my geopolitics course, Geopolitics from First Principles. The link is in the description below. So today, Twitter's Grok AI system reported this, and this is in reference to events that started in February. This is what it said. Taliban trio officers land in New Delhi. In a surprising turn of events, three Taliban General Directorate of Intelligence GDI officers arrived in New Delhi, India in February 2024, disguised as diplomats. They are currently residing in the Afghan embassy in Chanakyapuri, New Delhi, the diplomatic enclave. This visit is seen as a strategic move to strengthen ties between India and Afghanistan, focusing on security, economic and regional issues. The Taliban's presence in India has sparked discussions about the future of Afghan-Indian relations and the potential implications for Pakistan, given the historical tensions between the two countries. This development also raises questions about the Taliban's intentions and their relationship with India, as well as the broader geopolitical landscape in the region. Grok is an early feature and can make mistakes, verify its outputs. So that is what Twitter's AI system is reporting based on you know information and news collated from a wide variety of sources. Now, here's what the journalist Siddhant Sibyl had to say about this. He says, Afghan Shajid affair in Delhi, Sayyid Mohammed Ibrahim Khil dismisses reports of Taliban officials in Delhi. And further, he says, Afghan Consul General Zakia Vardak also dismisses reports of Taliban officials in Delhi. So, the Afghan government or the representatives of Afghanistan in India have denied these reports, the three Taliban officials are in New Delhi. Now, here's what an Afghan journalist had to say. His name is Bilal Sarwari. And let's read this out, what he has to say. Taliban in India, a security and defense source in Kabul confirmed that three Taliban GDI officials disguised as diplomats have arrived in New Delhi in February this year. They're currently residing in one of the three buildings of the Afghan embassy in the diplomatic enclave of Chanakyapuri area in New Delhi. The Afghan embassy has three building compounds and so on and so forth. They have been strictly requested by the Indian counterparts to fully avoid going to the Afghan embassy and also to refrain from public engagements. They are staying in building C, apparently. Their presence is likely to serve the purpose of effective coordination and fast communication with the Indian officials on issues of security, economic and regional interests. Taliban's diplomats' official presence may be acknowledged by New Delhi after the upcoming general elections in India. So this statement is essentially speculation. It is this gentleman's opinion when he says that the presence may be acknowledged at a future point in time. That's entirely speculation. But let's read further. The Taliban are largely not favorably viewed by many Indians, particularly by the BJP's supporters. Once again, he is speaking on behalf of a large number of people who he does not represent. So once again, this is speculation and opinion. Let's continue further. It is also reported that Indian officials visit these three Taliban diplomats on a regular basis and the current acting Shahjid affair of the Afghan embassy in New Delhi reports to them on a daily basis. So who is reporting this? Can you please provide some sources? So once again, this is hearsay. This is this person's interpretation. This is this person's version of events. This is this person's opinion. Let's read further. The question for many Afghans is that who is closer to the Taliban at present? Is it India or their once great supporter Pakistan? And should common Afghans trust India as their key regional partner in the future? Many questions would need convincing answers before New Delhi could ever get closer to be a strategic partner of Afghanistan as it was over the past 20 years. So that is what this gentleman who is a journalist has to say. He says, he, he raises the question of who is closer to the Taliban at present? Is it India? Or is it Pakistan, the once great supporter of the Taliban, Pakistan? And secondly, should common Afghans trust India as their key regional partner in the future? So let me address these two questions. First of all, who is closer to the Taliban at present? Is it India or is it their once great supporter, Pakistan? Let's go back in history to the year 2020 and the couple of years preceding that. The question I would like to ask the audience, my dear viewers, is which nation is it? that handed over Afghanistan 
to the Taliban on a platter, gift wrapped. Was it India? Was it Pakistan? Or was it some other country? And the answer, as we all know, is it is the US that did this. The US handed over power to the Taliban in 2020. And there was a whole deal, a whole bunch of negotiations that happened in the couple, two, three years preceding that. So the US handed over power to the Taliban. They ensured that the Taliban very rapidly gained control of the nation. Right? They moved out of the country almost overnight in the dead of night from Bagram, Airbase and other places. And suddenly there was a power vacuum. The government of Afghanistan, the puppet government, the puppet regime, uh, which was supported by the US, evaporated overnight. And the Taliban just strolled in and took power. So it's the US that transferred the power in Afghanistan from their puppet regime to the Taliban. They did that. And it is not a great secret that the US is currently paying the Taliban a weekly stipend of allegedly $60 million, $60 million a week. So who is the Taliban's greatest supporter? It's actually the United States. All right. So here's the balance of power in this region. Balance of power. Power is this, is this force. Power is a number. And power is also a force. The greater the power within a nation, the greater the outward pressure it exerts on its neighbors. So in Asia, in this region, the strongest power, the most massive power is China. And it has a significantly large hard power score. The second largest power in this region is India. China is a great power. India is a middle power aspiring to be a great power. And the third power in this region is Pakistan. Now, India serves as a counterbalance from the American perspective to China. It's a great way to counterbalance China. And the US would like to utilize India further in the coming years in this role. But India shouldn't get too big for its boots. And that's why Pakistan has a great amount of utility for the US as a counterweight, as a counterbalance to India. Pakistan can always be brought into the mix in a variety of ways to counterbalance India. Pakistan is a nuclear power. Pakistan is the world's greatest exporter of terrorism. And all these wonderful factors and attributes that Pakistan possesses can be used against India at any given point in time. So India counterbalances China. Pakistan counterbalances India. Now, Pakistan also has to be kept in check. Something needs to balance out Pakistan as well. So that's the role that Afghanistan plays from the US perspective. The Taliban are on the US payroll and they can always be brought into the mix to, let's say, offset Pakistan and make sure that Pakistan behaves and keep Pakistan also under pressure. And we know the situation around the Durand line. The Taliban are a Pashtun nationalist force. They do not recognize the, the Durand line, the boundary between Pakistan and Afghanistan. That's a major territorial dispute the entire border is disputed and the Taliban claim significant portions of Pakistani ter territory, territory that's currently part of Pakistan, the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region, and so on. So that's a major pressure point for Pakistan. So India counterbalances China, Pakistan counterbalances India, and the Taliban counterbalance Pakistan. That is the game the US is playing. All right. So the major supporter from the Taliban perspective is actually the US. The US are still funding the Taliban. Now, we know that Afghanistan and the border issue is a great pressure point for Pakistan. And that is something that the Americans can use to keep Pakistan under control and make sure Pakistan behaves. So that is the deal. And from a purely self-interested perspective, from India's perspective, it is beneficial to India if there are tensions between Afghanistan and Pakistan. India has never used Afghanistan as a proxy. Look back at the history since 1947 when India was given uh, its independence by the British. India has never utilized Afghanistan as a proxy in any manner, in any geopolitical game. India has never done anything that hurts the interests of Afghanistan or the interests of the Afghan people. On the contrary, India has spent a lot of its own scarce resources and money to help the people of Afghanistan at the at the worst possible times in Afghanistan history, Afghanistan's history. So this question that this gentleman has raised, whether a common Afghans should trust India as their key regional part, partner in the future, that is kind of interesting. It makes me wonder what his true intentions are. So India has never done anything that has hurt Afghanistan since 1947, since India became independent. So the question of whether India can be trusted or not simply doesn't arise. India is the only disinterested part, party 
in this region that has unconditionally supported Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan. And even during the civil war era from the 1990s onwards, all the way until the transfer of power to the Taliban, India has consistently helped Afghanistan. India has uh, built the parliament building. India has built dams. India has invested significantly in agricultural projects. India has supported Afghanistan when it comes to humanitarian assistance, food, medicines, vaccines, whatever is needed. Billions of dollars India has spent. And this has been happening consistently for decades. It's not something that, it's not like India has suddenly become interested in Afghanistan for a certain nefarious uh, agenda. That's not the case. So the question of whether India can be trusted or not simply doesn't arise. India is the only trustworthy partner that the people of Afghanistan have. Even the Taliban knows this. When the Taliban came to power, they made, they made it a point not to impede any Indian movements in Kabul. They ensured that no Indian was touched or harmed. And the relations between the two nations are very good and it doesn't matter who's in power, whether it's the US puppet regime in the past or whether it's the Taliban, there is going to be cooperation. And then the next question is, how should India deal with Afghanistan and the Taliban specifically in the future? Should India deal with what some people would call uh, an oppressive regime? Well, take a look at what others are doing. The US is engaging with the Taliban diplomatically. It's been doing that for a number of years. Even when they were fighting the Taliban, they were holding discussions and talks with the Taliban on a certain, at a certain level. And what about China? The Chinese have been holding diplomatic uh, talks and diplomatic uh, relations with the Taliban ever since they came to power. The Chinese are very practical, very pragmatic. They have their own interests in Afghanistan. They seek the resources of Afghanistan, the copper and whatever else. And they seek uh, to use Afghanistan as a transshipment route for their Belt and Road Initiative. So they have their own interests and they are perfectly happy to deal with the Taliban diplomatically. They have no issues with that. What about Russia? The Russians have been dealing with, with the Taliban even before they came to power and they are still uh, engaging diplomatically with the Taliban. Even a second-rate global power like the UK is engaging with the Taliban diplomatically. Everyone's doing that, but apparently India should not do that. India should have higher standards. What utter nonsense. The Taliban are the government in Afghanistan. And India should engage with the Taliban constructively in a mutually beneficial manner, in a manner that benefits the people of Afghanistan and hopefully India as well. Now, what about things like the status of women? What about schooling for girls? The Taliban oppresses women, apparently. The Taliban doesn't allow girls to gain education. There's no education for girls. What about human rights? What about democracy? What about the oppressive nature of the Taliban? What should India do about this? Should India pressure the Taliban to change their policies? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It is an internal matter of Afghanistan. The people of Afghanistan, if they have issues with the, with the Taliban, they should themselves take it up with the Taliban. It's none of India's business. We do not interfere in the internal affairs of other nations. So India should engage constructively with the Taliban in a manner that is mutually beneficial for both nations. And of course, it is true that both nations, India and Afghanistan, have a common adversary in Pakistan, this terrorist nation that none of its neighbors likes. Neither Iran, nor Afghanistan, nor India is happy with having a terrorist regime in its neighborhood. So that is something that obviously will unite Afghanistan, India, and even Iran to a certain extent. And it is true that the Durand Line is a major source of worry for Pakistan. The Pakistanis do not worry about Afghanistan, about the Taliban invading and capturing and taking over Pakistan. That won't happen. Pakistan is simply too powerful as a military state. Uh, for this to happen. The Pakistanis also claim that they will go ahead and, and annex the Wakhan corridor and things like that. That also is just uh, talk. That also most likely won't happen. But the tension between the two nations, Afghanistan and Pakistan, will continue. Now, India is not going to do anything to exacerbate these tensions or take advantage of the tensions. India is just going to focus on its economy, on its rise, on the issues that exist within India and uh, outside of India overall, globally, and India is not going to interfere in Afghanistan-Pakistan relations. Don't expect that to happen. So those essentially are the contours of the India-Afghanistan relationship. It's about trade. It's about security, cooperation. It's about humanitarian assistance to the people of Afghanistan. It's about seeing in Afghanistan once again rise and become relatively stable and hopefully in the long run more prosperous than what it is right now. India simply seeks a stable neighborhood, a stable Afghanistan especially. Pakistan, we will deal with it later as, as time goes by. Pakistan is an artificial temporary nation. I think everybody in the region recognizes that, whether it's India, it's Iran or Afghanistan. We know 
it's a matter of time because before that nation implodes. The only reason Pakistan still exists is because it is propped up by external powers like the US and China. Let's see how long that lasts. Temporary nations don't last forever. So that is the deal. India should engage constructively with the Taliban and individuals who raise questions about whether India should be trusted or not. I, I think we need to examine whether those individuals have a specific agenda, a hidden agenda of some kind. And those people, their credibility and this, their trustworthiness is actually something that comes into question. So that's the deal about the India, Afghanistan, India, Taliban relationship. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon in the next video.